So, uh, anybody aware of this? Um, here we go. So this is um, live Washington breaking news, secret of the universe revealed, gravitational wave is a ripple in space-time. Anybody see that in the news? Ah, great. This is the second talk I've done actually and you're the first person who's seen it. So, it's just, a, just about awareness. So this is um, looking at how uh, we can move on um, and obviously with awareness um, you become self-empowered because you're in control. Um, so just bear that in mind every time you're listening to a piece of information that may not quite resonate with you, you know, you may think that's rubbish but actually it's all part of the awareness process. Um, I recommend that you actually have a look at this talk uh, by um, Stephen Kotler, he, he gave an address to the Google staff and he was working on the uh, rise of Superman decoding the science of ultimate human performance. Very interesting guy, him and his partner spoke to them for about uh, 30 minutes to an hour um, and they work also with uh, Red Bull who obviously makes super sugary drinks which aren't super helpful for everybody but uh, they are looking at how the human performance can be improved. They did a survey and shockingly, um, if people were told they had a, a condition that was life-threatening, only one in eight, uh, this is a survey in America, only one in eight would actually make the effort to change in order not to die. That is a, quite an amazing um, figure. So I think actually, if you combine your awareness, get to your self-empowerment, the only other thing left to look at is your intelligence. And as uh, Stephen Hawking says, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change, which is actually what we're all doing here today. You're, you're hearing new information and you're looking to see how you can adapt to that change. So congratulations. Give yourselves a round of applause. Go on then. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so basically we're not here to sell you anything, we're not here to convince you of anything, it's just information and it's all open sourced and it's free. So you can uh, take as much or as little as you like and take it away with you. Um, so plasma, this is a, a term that's been adopted by Mr. Kesh uh, to describe the interaction of magnetic and gravitational fields. Uh, it's uh, it's not obviously not to be confused with plasma as in plasma blood or any other type of plasma. So, it, so it is, you are relearning, uh, um, if, if you like, the definition of plasma and, and basically we're, we're concerned with uh, electromagnetic fields. Um, so if I show you one bottle of water I might put that on there. And this is GANS. Okay. Now, if I said to you that um, this water has a memory and this GANS is giving out a field, because that water's got a memory, the GANS can influence the water. How, how many of you would be okay with that? Great. Okay, we'll be, we'll be going on to in-depth explanation of what GANS is, what plasma is, and what nano is. Okay, that's great. Um, and I'm, I'm glad so many of you are in that space. Uh, I just thought I'd point out to you that this guy, we, we, we probably all know about Dr. Emoto and his um, frozen water slides, which uh, show how water can be positively influenced with uh, good thoughts, music, etc. But uh, I don't know if, if anybody knows about uh, Luc Montagnier. This is a guy who um, won the Nobel Prize for identifying the HIV virus. Now he then went on to look at water and mem the memory of water. So this is, uh, he filmed, and it's on YouTube, you can get it, only last year, a complete experiment where he took the DNA, um, the HIV virus, put it into, into water, diluted it down until it was no longer apparent in the water. He then was able to look at the um, signature of the water through a special reader 
then send that signature, which was a digital signature, over to a, a, another professor in Italy who was a complete skeptic about what he was doing. He then took that uh, um, signal and put another beaker of water onto the same reader. And then they applied normal DNA testing techniques that they used to catch criminals. Um, and lo and behold, what happened was the, uh, that technique involves putting in a, a marker, which is actually a prompter to, to prompt the, the reforming of the DNA they are, they are looking for. So once the, um, once the water had been put on the, on the tra transference uh, uh, transmitter and the marker had been put in, the DNA of the HIV that was, had been taken in France was then reproduced in Italy. So showing that the water um, actually had a memory even though the, D even though the um, HIV uh, DNA had been completely washed out of the water for, at the start of the experiment. So you can get that on, on, on YouTube, but it's a really good, um, a, a really good uh, experiment to look and, and proves how, how water works. So we're basically looking at fields. This is, this is what we're looking at. So in, in between these two is a field. The water's picking up the field from the GANs. What I ought to say is this area here is actually the, the, what, what Kesha is referring to as the plasma. Or the, uh, uh, so it's a plasma field. Once it enters the water, then you've got liquid plasma. But we'll look at that in more detail. So we're trying to think nano, think plasma. Uh, right, anybody here done any uh, quantum physics? Knows a little bit about quantum physics. Just a smattering. Okay, just very briefly. Um, we're here, matter. Okay? Uh, liquid and gas we can perceive. What we're talking about today is everything from the nano up. But we're mainly focusing on this. So I want to encourage you to try and think about yourself and your environment in terms of nano, GANs and plasma. In conjunction with that, because we are obviously working within the quantum field, our intent has an effect on whatever we're doing. So all of these processes are enhanced massively when you use a positive intent. And that's something that uh, Oliver will be going through uh, and, and exploring further. Um, that's a, a linear version. Uh, solid, where we are, liquid gas. Nano is um, a co a co basically a coating. The GANS is uh, the next step on from the nano and, and the plasma, the result. Okay, I'll, I'll just mention about intent. Um, I, have a, I have two cousins, and uh, strangely enough, they actually look very similar. One of them is a world, one of the world's top quantum physicists. That's actually how I got into this in the first place. And his, uh, his main focus is on, uh, on, on exploring gravity. My other cousin is a tennis coach, and I couldn't work out how the two were connected. But um, when, I'd, uh, when I finished speaking to my cousin, who's the physicist, I, I, I got a, a, an understanding. I had to go away and do some more research. But then I spoke to my cousin who does tennis coaching, and he explained that when you're looking at champions who are equal in their physicality, their skill, uh, their speed, etc., the only way you're going to get somebody to reach a point above his uh, competitor is to, is to make sure their technique is... Uh, really uh, on, the, on the ball. So he said one of the things I teach them is to, before they come up with a winning serve, is to stand with the ball and bounce it for about 16 seconds. This apparently is a, about the time it takes to think about what you're going to do and focus on the outcome of your next action in your reality. And that's a standard technique, uh, this 16 seconds. And 
then of course I realized what was actually happening was he is playing with his intent and creating his next 16 seconds of play and if his intent is stronger than his opponents then even though they're physically matched in skill and everything else he will have the advantage. So it, it is being used already and obviously by loads of sportsmen as, as I referred back to that uh, talk uh, given to the Google staff uh, it's exactly that that they're playing with the intent. So that's why intent is valid um, with this technology. So gravitational, I won't go into it in too much detail because we're pushing for time here, but uh, we're looking at um, gravitational uh, a pulling, magnetical repulsion. So um, I was going to talk a bit about um, how this uh, magnetic um, phenomenon, shall we put it, has gone down in history, but I'll keep it short because um, we've got quite a lot to get through. When you go back to the uh, when you go back to the film, I suggest you look at uh, some of these uh, guys because uh, you've got you've got things like biomagnetism, uh, which was. Uh, had a great involvement by this NASA chief medical officer. Um, water retaining memory, uh, we've also we've looked at. Uh, there's biophotons, um, and, and one, one guy in particular, Walter Russell, you know, this is 1947, he's, he's talking about, he's basically talking about what we're calling now plasma, but he's talking about it in different terms. Uh, transfer of uh, memory in water by Luke Montagno, we've discussed. Um, this guy, Anthony Holland, he's, he's a really interesting guy. He's actually a music professor, and he got together with uh, um, some guys to do an experiment to see how he could affect cancer cells using uh, resonance. And he, again, he's on, a, he's on a TEDx talk, and there was a film there showing how the cancer cells are actually breaking up when the resonance is applied. So it's all to do with fields, uh, all to do with um, uh, resonance, um, and that's really what I'm saying, is to try and encourage you to, first of all, recall, obviously we're living in a light spectrum, but the only bit we can see is a very small part. Um, so there's lots and lots going on outside of our field of perception. Um, and then finally, just to, to sum up, just to remind us all, we live it, we're obviously living in a, a quantum world. Um, the energy is... Uh, is there for all to tap into. Um, I'm assuming you all know that because otherwise you wouldn't be here. So I like to think of it um, in terms of a big pie that when you put your focus down or your intent or you, uh, you actually speak or you actually write uh, uh, or make a sound or play music, you are actually taking a slice out of the large quantum pie. Of course, the reverse of that is that you're limiting yourself to that slice, and so your perception will be limited to that uh, particular area you've uh, sliced off for yourself. But obviously, everybody has free will, and you can uh, add or, 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 or uh, reject any part uh, of that information. So I'm hoping today that what you will do is to actually be really greedy, and just go for the whole pie. <laughs> so I've, I've talked about that already. So now we've got a, um, I've given you a little bit of an introduction. These, this is now uh, a short film which is made by the Kesha Foundation. Um, I just need to check, is that sound on, on, on the, yeah, it's on, okay. So here we go. Um, it's got an American um, intro, etc. so. The Cash Foundation, an independent, non-profit, non-religious, space-based organization founded by nuclear engineer Mehran Tabakoli Cash is introducing to humanity the science of the universe, plasma science. Keshe Foundation develops universal knowledge in space technologies that 
provide solutions to major global problems, revolutionizing agriculture, health, energy, transportation, materials, and more. The application of plasma science in the form of specially developed plasma reactors and other devices will give humanity the real freedom to travel in deep space. Plasma science exists throughout the whole universe. It is here and it belongs to you. Our knowledge, research, and development regarding the plasma structure has progressed to the point of enabling everyone to participate in the process. Become a creator and understand the work of the universe, the good of humankind on this planet, as well as in space. The use of MEGRAVs, nanomaterials, GANs, liquid plasma, field plasma, and other plasma technologies have come as a new dawn for humanity to progress and work in harmony with the universe. Conventional technology applications are wasteful, damaging, and cause pollution to the planet and all living beings. Plasma science provides solutions and improves existing methods and use of resources in all aspects that touch the lives of all beings. Plasma is defined by the foundation as an entire content of fields which accumulate and create matter and is not defined by its physical characteristics like ionization or temperature. Also, plasma science, we understand how we can convert matter back to the fields. Quoted from Mr. Cash, MEGREV stands for Magnetic Gravitational, which means plasma absorbs or gives. And every plasma has both. It has give and it has take. When they can't find the balance, they distance themselves until they find balance they can give to the others. That they can receive what they want to receive and give further. Certain atoms and molecules release and absorb magnetic or gravitational fields. Released fields are available to be absorbed by other objects. The Keshe Foundation has developed a way to gather these free flowing fields from the environment within a resourceful and beneficial new state of transitional matter, which MT Keshe named GANs. The first step of the process of the formation of various basic types of GANs is nanocoating metals. This is carried out either chemically by etching, <coughs> steam coating with sodium hydroxide, or thermally by heating, fire coating by gas burner. During either coating process, gaps between outermost layers of atoms are created. The residual coating is often referred to as nanocoating, defined by the structured layers of nanomaterial which build up during the creation process of the coating. Nanocoated metal in interaction with other various metal plates in a salt water solution creates MEGRAV fields. These fields then attract available elements to form a specific GANS, which collects and settles at the bottom of the container. This GANS is formed from independent energized molecules like little suns that can be used in various applications. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah? Okay, so this is a, a short film uh, on looking at the health uh, benefits. Conventional science teaches us that what we can't measure does not exist. This led to a separation between science and spirituality. Plasma science combines both of these worlds. The entire universe is made up of magnetical giving and gravitational taking fields. We absorb only those fields we can use, and we emit fields we do not need. After a while, the fields are balanced, creating balanced matters. Imagine there is a technology which can balance your body, emotions, and soul. And because everything is made of fields, including our emotions, this simple technology easily processes the roots of your disease. Cash Foundation develops simple methods, ready-to-use materials, and efficient medical health units that work on different field levels to process many existing health conditions and help restore the natural balance in your body. More and more studies are showing that emotion is at the heart of many illnesses. After the use of the plasma coil units, Changes in emotional patterns are noticed, and then following this, changes in the physical body occur. We don't cure diseases, but process them by bringing the body to a balanced state in such that the disease cannot exist. 
This means you can achieve complete emotional and physical balance in a relatively short time. People all over the world use GANS and GANS water, plasma water, within different devices and processing methods. The Keshe Foundation offers a full spectrum of information pertaining to GANS and its uses, from solid plasma to liquid plasma to field plasma. Which of the available information, processes, or devices resonates with you? At the same time we open the door to the power of our soul, Cash technology elevates the soul of the man in order to bring balance to our body, bring balance to our flow of emotions, bring peace to the world, and readiness to open up to the universal community. Okay, um, so I'm going to hand over to Oliver now. Um, who will go through that in more detail. So if you've got any questions, maybe uh, you should put them to him as we start, uh, and, then th and then he can say whether or not they'll be worked out during his presentation, or he should answer them straight away. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> 